Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In this episode, we're doing a little project on this TV cabinet that I found for free in my neighborhood. It's a piece of solid wood and it has wheels, it has doors, it has a TV slider inside, but we're gonna change things up here. We're not gonna keep it a old TV cabinet because who puts TVs in cabinets anymore? Um, I know I don't. <laughs> But the plan is to remove the doors, remove the TV slider, add a rear wooden wall, install wine glass hangers and a mini wine bottle rack, and paint it black. Whew, that was a mouthful. But let's get this project started, and we will begin by removing the doors. I'm using my drill, so let's get these screws out. I couldn't get my drill right in on the last one up top, so decided I will try to remove it with a screwdriver. And door one is removed. And now on to door number two. And now door two is removed, but there are still magnetic connectors on the top here. We are gonna remove with our drill. Perfect, we have the doors off and the hardware. Now let's remove this old TV slider. And now it's removed, but let's move on to the sanding. I start with 100 grit and then go to 180 grit with my random orbital sander. We're not trying to sand down to the bare wood. We're just sanding to scuff up the surface so the paint adheres better and to remove any small scratches in the surface. Now I'm adding some wood filler just to fill in the screw holes from the TV slider. So we're gonna fill that in, scrape over with a putty knife, and then I brush over with my finger just to make sure everything's smooth. I like to let wood filler dry overnight. You want it hard so you can turn on your sander and just sand everything perfectly smooth. I'm actually using a 400 grit sander just on the wood filler just so we can make it perfect. So when I picked up this cabinet for free I accidentally snapped one of the back legs off but no problem we'll use some wood glue and we will put this back together. So I'm going to use some painter's tape just to hold the cracked piece off and let it completely dry. The best thing is is that the cabinet actually sits on wheels so it's not a big deal. After waiting overnight the wood glue has done its job. I did end up putting some wood filler on over the crack just so everything looks good in the end. I grabbed a damp cloth and just cleaned up all the dust from this piece before we can get started on priming. I'm priming this piece with Rust-Oleum Flat White. The reason I went hardcore with the primer is my original plan. I was going to paint this a cream white but uh, after spending some time on Pinterest, I decided to go black. 
It never hurts to do a layer of primer anyways. It's just another surface that protects your piece. Do a quick sand with the 220 grit sanding sponge and it's ready for paint. But since we have a huge hole in the back side of this cabinet, we are gonna build a wooden wall. So all we are doing is cutting up a bunch of even pieces and we're just gonna slice them up here with the sliding mudder saw. This did take a bit of time, so let's speed this up. I placed all the wooden pieces in just to make sure it fit nicely and then I grabbed my Gorilla wood glue and started gluing. As you can see, I used a generous amount of wood glue. I did not want this wall coming down. But anyways, after letting this wood glue dry, we're ready to get started on painting. So I'm using an HVLP paint sprayer. I'm using the Wagner Flexio 590. First thing you wanna do is strain your paint so you don't get anything caught up in there and it ruins your, your paint job. So putting it together, you attach multiple pieces if you want a full detailed guide of this gun, just let me know in the comments and I'll, uh, I'll throw a video together just for you guys. But anyways, you put the gun together, you attach your suction hose here on the bottom, and then you just connect your, your nozzle to your paint container. And then you want to connect your nozzle to your it's your turbine piece which gets the air and sprays it out for you and then I usually put a piece of cardboard on the wall just tape it on and I practice different settings to make sure the paint's spraying the way I want it and yes I tuck my clothes in just so I don't rub up against the pieces when I'm painting them because you're kind of running around with this spray gun here's a GoPro view up close just to see the finish I do change a few settings here just to define what I'm looking for. I finally found the right coat. That looks good. Let's start spraying this piece. Typically I hold the gun about 5 inches back from the surface I'm painting. And you want to keep your gun straight with the piece you're painting as well. This gives the best results. Painting the tabletop like this is pretty difficult. It hurts the arm, but just be careful you don't rub up on the paint. Here's a GoPro view. Finishing it off. Then I did some light sanding with 220 grit sanding sponge in between coats. So I just found this nightstand for $10. We're going to spray it while we're doing the second coat and we're going to make a quick 100 bucks. So why not, hey? After finishing up painting, I grabbed some polycrylic and a foam brush and I just applied some to the top here and also to the bottom shelf. So after using the foam brush, you could see some uh, brush marks just going back and forth. So I want to try out the polycrylic in my spray gun. So I sanded it down a tiny bit and let's see what happens. Okay, so the polycrylic sprayed really nice, 
but there were some issues that sometimes the gun would kind of bog out on me but once it was going it was good and another issue was I had some drips that were coming out of the gun and that wasn't good and you can see one here at the end I was pretty annoyed by that one I'll tell you that <laughs> I did just grab a clean rag and the foam brush and kind of just mix it in so you couldn't tell. It worked out pretty good. You can definitely still see the brush strokes from front to back, but the spray marks from side to side, those white lines, they completely disappeared and it was a perfectly smooth finish. So spraying polycrylic with the Wagner Flexio 590, it worked. Anyway, I found this wooden wine rack at the thrift store. It's actually just like the one I found for the bar cart video. If you didn't see that video, check it out. Thanks. And anyways, I'm applying early American wood stain and it's giving it a nice color to go well with the, the wine rack look I'm going for. And when they were stained, I applied lacquer over them just to give them a nice finish. I also purchased these gold wine glass hangers to install, they're pretty cool. So what I did here to install them, I measured two inches off for the first one and then I used that piece of wood that I have behind it, yeah, I measured four inches uh, between each screw hole and then I pre-drilled each uh, hole where the screw was going and then I screwed them in with a screwdriver and it was pretty simple. As I was putting the third one in, the screw snapped in half, so, so I just had to go get another screw and I put that one in after. But let's take a look at this cabinet one more time before. And now let's take a look at what it looks like after. The top is super smooth, which is awesome. And this rolling wine bar is ready for a new home. If you guys like this furniture flip, don't forget to hit that thumbs up and subscribe button. I appreciate you guys watching. Thanks for the support. See you next time.